Hello art students and parents. Welcome to my very first art lesson video. I will be posting these weekly as a part of your online art learning here in Haines. My name is Mrs. Miller and welcome. This is my house. I'm isolating at my own house. I'm on my deck here in Haines, Alaska and we are going to be doing an activity today that only requires being outside. Land art, also referred to as earth art, is art that is made directly in the landscape, sculpting the land itself or making structures using natural materials such as rocks or twigs. The land art movement was born alongside the environmental movement in America during the late 1960s, when many Americans were turning their attention towards global pollution and plastic waste, turning back to the land, so to speak. Key components of land art? Materials are directly extracted from nature. Many of those materials were site specific, so found around where the sculpture was being built, and they were all outside, not in a gallery space. Hey guys, so now that you know a little bit more about land art and the earth art movement, we are going to actually decide where we're going to build our sculptures and what kind of materials we're going to use to build our sculptures with. Obviously you want to use something that is in abundance, uh, preferably around your house or something that's easily accessible. Um, so I'm here in my own backyard and I'm going to go on a little bit of a scavenger hunt and find what I have back here to build an art piece with. So after doing a little bit of scavenging, you guys, turns out I have a lot of lichen in my backyard. <laughs> so I'm gonna do something with all of these twigs that are covered in lichen. finally made it past the big hurdle you guys I joined the two together there they are just barely joined together <laughs> So it's been two days since I started the initial construction of my land art twig sculpture and now I'm coming back to it. I'm trying to build a bridge between two of the trees in my yard with just twigs and it's hanging on just ever so <laughs> slightly. So I'm actually going to try and make it a little bit more structurally sound. This is so delicate. It's crazy. The other thing that I wanted to mention about land art and Andy Goldsworthy specifically is that all of his pieces and his work as a whole has a time element. So he really wanted to see what would happen to his pieces over time and if they became a part of the landscape. So I wanted to kind of play around with mine uh, and see how long it'll stick around in my yard. Okay, so we're here at the beach and I'm gonna do a couple simple pieces of land art. Just gonna do some finishing. 
touches on here. And then we're gonna go home and get warm. So my challenge for you guys this week is to build your own land art sculpture. And I want you to have those three elements that I talked about in land art at the beginning of the video. It needs to be made of materials that are from the earth. It needs to be materials that you can find on site, which means that if you're building in your yard, something that you can find really close to your yard. If you're building at the beach like you saw in this video, make sure you're grabbing materials from the beach. They're already there. And then thirdly, of course, it's outside. You're not building a small sculpture inside. It needs to be outside in the elements, and that's part of the land art experience is just how does time and mother nature affect it. So go outside, enjoy, and have fun with land art. Mm -hmm.